Good morning, everyone. My name is Nisha. I'm part of the My School team for over seven years now. And today I'll be discussing about upgrading to A.2 and how we have tried to make it an automated experience. A moment for the safe harbor statement. In this session, I plan to um, complete first discuss about the import importance of upgrade and what are the upgrade options that's available for the users, and how a straightforward upgrade to A.0 would look like, and then get into the details of the process of upgrading to A.0. And also, I will discuss how we have tried to improve the upgrade experience overall in A.0. So why do we have to upgrade our MyScale installations? Generally, the newer releases addresses some of the security concerns reported. And also, the major releases do come with a major performance improvement as well as the scalability. And yeah, the major releases, again, has a host of new functionality. And also, it is important to reduce the technical debt that occurs with your MySQL installation. Uh, consider you're on 5.6 now, and you have to upgrade to A.0. The general guidelines is that you have to upgrade to 5.7 and then to A.0. Now you would have a lot of deprecated functionality within 5.7, which are which are then removed in A.0. This would mean a complex upgrade procedure for you to get onto A.0. So why are the upgrades generally postponed? Um, the users, the general apprehensions that the users have is do they have the sufficient knowledge in order to give to the upgrade? Or do they have enough resources who can contribute to the upgrade? And of course, the time taken. And the cost incurred is in two cases. One is the, uh, the cost incurred for the DBAs and consultants who would be doing the upgrade. And as well as the cost for the lost business during the downtime when you do a switch over. At some point in time, you do have to upgrade. And the general input from the DBA is that they have to reduce the risk and the cost involved during the upgrade. And also the total duration that uh, for the upgrade should be short. And for the customer application, it is important to retain the older MySQL behavior and then slowly move towards the newer behavior. And yeah, they do want to test the new version gradually. And when switching the downtime, it should be minimal. So what are the upgrade options available? There are two options. You can either do a dump upgrade or you can do an in-place upgrade. In case of dump upgrade, the difficult thing would be to back up your data directory. And then you dump the data from the existing MySQL dump using the MySQL dump utility and load this, the particular dump file using the newer instance of the MySQL. And then subsequently run the MySQL upgrade. In case you do not want the system schema and you're interested only in the user schema, you will back up your data directory, dump only the user schema again using the MySQL dump utility, and load this particular dump file using the newer MySQL instance, and then run the MySQL upgrade. So the, the other uh, option available is the in-place upgrade, where you again back up your data directory, stop your old MySQL instance, and then you change the binaries to the newer MySQL version. You'll have to adjust your config file uh, to set the correct defaults. And then you start your uh, new MySQL server on the old data directory and run the MySQL upgrade. So in-place upgrade versus the dump upgrade, what's recommended is the in-place upgrade. Why? Because in-place is generally faster than the dump upgrade. And in case of dump upgrade, as, as I mentioned previously, you do have deprecations and removals, and there are chances there are certain syntaxes which are not supported. And which means that you'll have to go in and modify the dump file before you actually go it from the new or my screen instance. In order to avoid that, it's better to go ahead with the in-place upgrade. So this would be the straightforward case. You would have backed up your data directory and then um, started a new MySQL instance on the old data directory. You would run your MySQL upgrade, it checks all your system tables and the user tables, and 
Delhi it should be true uh, without any issue. And you restart your server, look at the messages, and and see there are no errors, and then check if your apps and services are working fine. Prior to 5.7, the metadata was spread across uh, in different formats. That's your files, your system table, then as well as some amount of metadata was stored within the InnoDB uh, dictionary. And the system tables use the MySQL storage engine. And you might have come across these files, FRM trigger and dot opt. In A.2, it's all collected and it's stored in the DD tables, which uses the InnoDB storage engine. And it's called as the, yeah, the data dictionary. So as I mentioned, based on the inputs, you need the upgrade to be faster and should be uh, with lower risk. So what we have done is try to eliminate the legacy issues with the metadata. And we have transitioned from the legacy metadata handling to a uh, transactional data dictionary. And the upgrade process will uh, produce a consistent data dictionary. And also we have uh, tried to help the DBAs who are planning to upgrade to A.2. What we have done is we added a new utility called, I mean, as part of the shell, we have a new checker called the upgrade checker, which helps you prepare for the upgrade to A.0. And also during the upgrade, we have enforced certain checks uh, when the server comes up so that you don't have uh, legacy issues getting into your new metadata store. First, there are a lot of host of new features. You could look at the release notes. You could look at the blogs, as well as the MySQL documentation to see what's gone in. And a couple of them being the transactional data dictionary, the atomic details, the GIS, enhanced GIS support, roles, persistent runtime configuration, and much more. As I said, there are deprecations and removals, and the features that are removed are the query cache and the support for non-native partitioning. And the options and the variables that have removed is related to either log errors, log warning is replaced by log error with verbosity, which determines the kind of uh, warnings or errors or notes that gets logged onto your L log. And as well as the option related to secure auth uh, has been removed. And certain SQL modes have been removed, like um, no uh, create user autocrat. In terms of account management, the password function has been removed. Previously, you could create a user using the grant statement, which is no longer supported. And the syntaxes that have affected are extended and partition keywords. It's been removed from the explain. And uh, slash n was used as a synonym for null. Then it's uh, it's no longer supported. You'll have to explicitly use null. Uh, there has been a lot of changes in defaults, and I've highlighted a few of them here. Uh, the default character set and collision has changed to UTF-8 MB4 and UTF-8 MB4 900 accent insensitive and case insensitive. The default uh, preferred authentication plugin has changed from native to the caching chart to password. And the InnoDB unknown table spaces has changed from 0 to 2. So also, it's no longer uh, the MySQL system table space. It's a separate system table space. I'm sorry, a separate table space, which helps in uh, you could truncate your unknown uh, log table space. Also, like what Narendra mentioned, the log by log rim has changed from off to on. That's a new default. As well as in order to work well when you upgrade uh, from 5.7, you'll have to do a other instance rotate in a DB master key. Um, this re-encrypts your master key and uh, stores it back to your table space. Uh, as mentioned, the most important has been the cassette and the collation default changes. So when you're upgrading your schemas from 5.7 to 8.2, what we do is we do have the .op file, which does retain the um, the cache that has, that was used and is persisted. And when you upgrade, you don't have to really do any additional step. It still uh, has the same character set. 
that in terms of rolling and braid with your, if you have fun climbing, the difficult thing where you would upgrade your slave and then you would do your master. Say your master is on 5.7 and you have a slave which is on 8.2. Um, for the new schemas that get added on your master, it would still follow the 5.7 de uh, defaults of Latin. And you wouldn't really run an issue uh, on the slave though it is on 8.2. And also the new tables which get added to the existing schema picks up the schema's character set. So again, you wouldn't really run into any issues when you uh, get on to it or go on your slave. So I'm, as I mentioned, um, there is a, as part of the shell, you have a great checkup, which is a very useful tool. And what does it do? It actually checks whether your file is installation, it is ready for uh, upgrade. Um, so since it is part of the 5.7 releases, what you can do is you can run your that particular tool on your 5.7 installation and look for, uh, you know, uh, what are the legacy issues that you could, uh, could cause an issue during the upgrade. Clean up all of that at your own pace and then um, and then proceed with the upgrade. So as I mentioned, it's part of 5.7, it's an active development, and we are continuously adding uh, more checks to it uh, to improve the upgrade preparedness for your 5.7. And in the subsequent slides, I'm going to list off uh, all possible issues that you might run into upgrade. Of course, um, not all of your uh, environments would run into these issues, but it's just for the knowledge purpose that have listed all the issues. So the usage of the old temporal uh, data types we no longer support it on 8.2. So if you are 5.7 installation during your binary upgrade, if at all it's been retained, you need to clean up. And if you have conflicting DB object names and uh, with the reserved keywords, you need to rename all those. And the use, usage of UTF-8 MV3, this has been deprecated in 8.2, so we would throw the upgrade checkup catches these. Reserve table names in MySQL schema, we have the DD uh, table names created and the DD tables created in the MySQL schema. If you have any user tables in the MySQL schema which conflicts with these, uh, you would be getting errors uh, when you run the tool. And the foreign key names, which are longer than 64 characters, those generally the table names, which are 64 characters, where each character utilizes, say, three bytes. And then the foreign key name is not explicitly specified, but is auto-generated. And you would run issues where it grows more than 64 characters, which is not supported in 8 or 2. And the uh, usage of obsolete SEO modes. And if you have enough set column definitions containing elements longer than 255 characters, it's no longer supported in it auto. Usage of partition table and shared table spaces, not supported in it auto. Usage of remote functions, this is most likely like the GIS functions, uh, which are removed. And usage of remote group by ascending and descending. Uh, all the issues that are reported by your check table for upgrade command also gets listed when you run the uh, upgrade checker tool. <coughs> uh, let's consider an example. As I said, if you have, if you do have uh, user tables in the MySQL schema which conflicts with your DD table names, which are going to be created in A.2, you would, uh, the checker would actually uh, throw a warning. So it can be detected with the SQL query by uh, looking up with the MySQL schema name and the list of the DD table names. And what you'll have to do is rename the tables uh, with, which have the conflicting name uh, with respect to the DD table names. As I mentioned, there are certain functions which have been removed, for example, uh, point from text. And you can look up from the information schema in order to figure out well, which are these functions. So what you'll have to do as part of the uh, cleanup would be to use the ST or MVR alternative. 
for the remote functions. And that's the example there. As I mentioned, uh, uh, during the binary upgrade, it's possible that all the old data types retained in your system, but we are no longer supporting it in A.0. And it is essential that you clean up before you proceed uh, upgrading to A.0. Uh, what you can do is check table for upgrade on Py.7 would report it. Also, the MySQL shell upgrade checker would report the same. And what you need to do is a repair table so that your tables get rebuilt and you no longer have the older data type, but you would have your newer data type. So once you run your upgrade checker on 5.7 installation and it runs clean, you're all good to upgrade to A.2. So what you do is back up your data directory, install the version, run MySQL upgrade, restart the server, and you inspect the error log, reconnect the apps, and it should work fine. And if at all, as I mentioned, we have enforced checks uh, during the upgrade in A.2. So if at all your upgrade checker does not run clean and you attempt to do an upgrade, the upgrade is going to stop. We uh, revert back all the changes that's made so far and we we'll revert back to the original uh, 5.7 data directory. You can still start your 5.7 data, I mean server on it, continue with your cleanup and then start with the upgrade. Else we do, we refuse the upgrade. So, what our upgrade plans are, we want to continue improving the upgrade process. Um, we want to reduce the time and the risk that you can run into when you're doing the upgrade by enforcing more checks and ensuring no legacy issues get into your new metadata store. And yeah, the bulk of the time uh, for replace upgrade, as I said, we have the, um, the file-based metadata in which we have moved into a transaction data dictionary. So we do harvest the metadata for analysis and then also store it into uh, the new DC tables. And hence, we have to examine how we use the tables. So that's the bulk of the time that goes into MySQL now stores all the metadata you need to be. As I mentioned, it's already done. Added metadata for versioning. Now let's consider your DD tables are changing with newer releases within A.2. Now the server is self-aware from which version it's upgrading, so it handles the upgrade of your DD tables in itself. So you don't have to worry about that. And that's done through the versioning. Um, we have improved protection of metadata and yeah, it's good for security reasons. Previously, uh, your MySQL user tables, you could go ahead and actually do a couple of inserts onto your system tables and the integrity was just gone. And we have hidden uh, these certain uh, system tables, the DD tables are hidden, so you can't do anything there. And this enforces the integrity in terms. And remove the need for my fill upgrade client. Uh, work in progress and should be available soon. And it's more to the MySQL needs the server itself. It's no longer an external tool that you have to run at the end of every upgrade. Uh, it's part of the MySQL D server and of course it's Docker and container. So the traditional, I had explained the traditional way of you uh, doing an upgrade. Now what you do is stop the old MySQL server, change binaries to the new version, adjust your config files for the new server version, and then start your uh, MySQL server. As I said, it transitions from your old way of storing the metadata to the DD tables. So it analyzes and does an automatic upgrade. And this makes it faster. And with the work in progress, when we have this remote, you no longer have to remove, I mean, run the MySQL upgrade explicitly. And you don't have to restart the server because it, uh, you perform the upgrade and the server is up and running.
So what we've done, lower risk, in terms of lower risk, we have introduced gap rate checker, which identifies all sort of issues uh, that you could run into, that you can run on your 5.7 installation itself. And it's an active development. We are continuously adding more uh, checks, enforcing more checks to it. And of course, the metadata integrity, as I mentioned, we have hidden the system tables and some of the DP uh, tables. And you no longer can insert explicitly into it. And that way, we are enforcing the integrity of you know, uh, the system tables. Uh, Fast upgrade process, because we do uh, the metadata analysis as well as the metadata upgrade. And with the removal of the MySQL upgrade, you lose out on an additional step. You don't have to do the additional step, and it's taken care of within the server itself. Uh, the simplified upgrade process, because it's fewer steps now, and it does automatic uh, metadata upgrade as well. Um, a recap, so you prepare, uh, prepare for the upgrade. Uh, you look at the release notes and the other uh, resources in order to figure out what are the changes that's gone into the newer version. And run the MySQL upgrade checker through and fix all your issues. Um, and run it when until it's clean. Fix it and then run until it's clean. And test your applications on your 8.2 and do the backup and upgrade to 8.2. These are the resources. A lot of it is the documentation, and then also, also you have the blogs that you can uh, look up, uh, which, which gives you a bit more details um, of what is discussed here. So, A.15 is the latest, which can be downloaded. Any questions?